let's let's get right into it and uh, take a look at this trailer that they uh, released. I love the style that uh, this is the same style they used for Link's Awakening. I really think this looks good. And it has a cartooniness that really fits like the 16-bit era. So Link's as he's going down, singular arrow, and Zelda freezed herself. Just to run away. Uh. But it stops. Just like, when, when you think about like the old Link to the I kind of wish there was a Link to the Past remastered in this uh, in this style because it just looks I think it just fits really well with how it looked back in the day with the sprites, but sort of like modern 3D style graphics. That goes wisdom. Hello, everyone. I'm A.G. Aonuma. It's A.G. Aonuma. Of Zelda series. I like his shirt. What you just saw was the latest installment, The Legend of Zelda, Echoes of Wisdom. This time around, Link has vanished. Now, it's up to Princess Zelda to step into the protagonist role. You might be thinking, will Zelda fight with a sword then? Here, we wanted to create a new gameplay style that breaks conventions seen in past Legend of Zelda games with a top-down perspective. To explain more, please take a look at this video. So this is... See, I don't mind them using Zelda for, for this game since they decided, hey, we wanted to try something different. So I think that fits, you know, not using Link and going with a completely different character. Across the vast lands of Hyrule, strange rifts have appeared and have taken many people, including Link. Now alone, Zelda meets the fairy Tri. <laughs> hey, X-Run. Receives a mysterious staff called the Tri. Punctual podcaster. Who's who's uh what shade is uh <laughs> By waving the tri rod, he's got the tri rod. Zelda learned how to create an imitation of it. We're throwing shade at certain podcasters. Once you learn an echo of something, <laughs> you can recreate it whenever you'd like. Even if there's a wall blocking your path, you can create echoes. Table. What do you bring to the up? table, huh? I am like that. the table. You can create wooden boxes. Also a box. Beds, and unusual things like water blocks. Water, but this is Minecraft now. Look at look how Minecraft this is. Here's some water streams to come up. Learn and create echoes of things you find Whoa. while exploring Hyrule. You might be now a tree. What you discover to a trampoline. Whoa! Even battles will look different. You could pick the up the battles the themselves. Out, for example, this is actually one of the things I'm a little worried about. Where you're not using a sword directly, like is it gonna be a pain in the ass to to fight stuff, or like is it gonna be long and drawn out? That's not all like I like I like the idea of throwing of monsters. throwing After stuff at so, people. Fight by you know, like you got different. There might be a lot of different monsters fun ways different to uh so want to, based on the to dispatch enemies. Wisdom is key after all. Wisdom is key, Lamau. A great joke. The wind up Octorok here. I'm gonna I'm gonna go over in more detail. The fate of the kingdom is now in Zelda's hands. Uh oh. How was that? 
I hope you looked pretty cool. Of the echo ability, which channels Princess Zelda's wisdom. There are a lot of echoes in this game. To be honest, I haven't counted. He's even counted all. How you solve puzzles and battle enemies will change depending on the echoes used. Me in short, too. we've created a game where each player's experience will be different. Like the, they got that ghoul so that screams at you. Echoes of Wisdom launches September 26th. A Nintendo Switch Lite system inspired Oh boy, by you can buy more collect- They really- Nintendo really knows how to milk its fans out of its money. They know- they know how big their I- their IP is like, hey, you want this light version with the? Uh, it's probably like, you know some crap painted that'll come off uh, after uh, two years of use. Oh, we got it. Though honestly, probably people that, a lot of people that are buying like, oh, just never take it out of the, uh, never take it out of the box. Let me go down. Well, let's break it down. The trailer uh, here. <sighs> Going to uh, Premiere Pro here. Let's make sure this that look that looks fine. Okay. All right. Good. Good. I just want to make sure the visuals look good since it's my first time using it. Uh. So, I mean, as far as like from, and it's using Zelda as the protagonist is is new and interesting, and I think it works. Some people are like, "Oh, is it woke? Is she going to be girl bossing?" Uh, and then you always get that that kind of dumb discussion in, but. With it being a completely different game, or a completely different style of game than a than a normal Zelda game, I think it can work because obviously this this type of gameplay is. I mean, you could put Link in this role, but I think it almost sort of fits since she's. It's just not like a direct. There's no direct combat, but rather you're trying to like puzzle solve. And this is also actually something that kind of worries me a little bit about the uh, the game. Like, if it focuses more on like puzzle solving or like using the echoes to get around, is it gonna is this end up is this gonna be a little tiring or a little more slow paced than? Because I mean, like, two top down Zelda was ever like ultra fast paced, like breakneck gameplay. But is this gonna be even slower? And it's hard to say. I don't know. Like I think it's mostly going to come down to the f whether how just how smooth it is to change between echoes, and just how uh, how different uh, they let you sort of solve these different puzzles. Let's see. I mean, the, the echoes are a cool idea. Allows you a, a lot of freedom. Let's see. Speed it up. Got wooden boxes here. Beds. Whoa. The water blocks, like I said, this does definitely remind me of of uh Minecraft. Though it is kind of worrying, like is like is this something I have to do like a lot when I want to move around? I have to put up a uh water blocks or a bunch of tables. Hopefully it's not something you have to use a lot, and it's mostly kind of like uh, the old Legend of Zelda games where, like, maybe you have to, like, hook shot over something occasionally or lift a stone. This is, this was kind of interesting. If you look at this, the objects have different physics. And you could see her, you could see the, you could use this, uh, you can, like, just jump over this, over this, uh, steam wall. Or you could put a shrub in front of it and just walk past it. So this idea that one you have uh, different objects have different weights, which is kind of an interesting physics uh, thing that might be used uh, creatively in the game, and two that they give you the option to solve these puzzles in different ways, I think is actually very cool. Where they, if you just want to hop over it, or you want to just completely block it, I mean, obviously the shrub seemed like a much. Uh, much better option, but the idea that they let you solve it in different ways, I think, is really nice. I really always like what games give you different paths to uh, to solve these puzzles. I think it's uh, just ends up making it a lot a uh, lot more interesting, a lot more enjoyable when like you and your friend could come up with two different two different solutions. And it looks and uh, it looks like from if you look at the little fairy has like uh, right now it has two triangles but 
I think it normally has either three or four, and that might be an upgradable thing, but there's a limit on that how many echoes you can have based on how many triangles this uh, little fairy has. Pick up and throw a rock at so, like, you can put down a rock that the guy just runs into and attacks, and they could throw it at him. That's not all, though. So, like, you kill that with the rock. The, again, the combat is, the, I think, the one place that worries me. Like, is it going to be boring or eventually get too repetitive to uh, to fight monsters rather than just, you know, like sometimes like you just want to swing a sword at it. You know, you just want to kill the thing. If you're fighting it for like the 20th time, is it really like fun to, I'm going to throw, summon two rocks and throw it at it. But with the echoes, maybe there's just a really, there's going to be a pretty standard echoes that'll just get rid of it. Or they're like, maybe there'll just be enough echoes that it's different enough that You've got different creative ways to sort of kill these monsters uh, that you're not going to get bored with it. So, like, summon the moblin, and this this thing just swings and kills it. And they both use uh, two of these echoes. So, that's like your limit of four. And it looks like these things, this thing's already flashing, which kind of indicates it'll disappear pretty quickly as well. I don't know how quickly you regenerate your sort of echo power or these little triangle like triforce Monsters type of pieces different abilities so choose the one you want to create make it like move forward that's good this, so there's Based there's a lot of cool ideas here that so this could be a very cool game and at least it's different you know i didn't play the uh link's awakening remake that was in this art style despite the fact that i really love love how it looks but it's like i've already beaten like link's awakening twice i don't need to play it again i mean it's great for people that have it and then like you see it summoning the meat and then they attract the all these crows and then it uses two echoes to and then it attacks two of them and misses like ooh, a piranha plant type of type of enemy really cool it's all using decorative items top nintendo yeah you can decorate the uh the world and then like you can see summoning an entire again i this is honestly this stack of stuff it, it is a little worrying to me uh like will this get boring but at the same time if like you're just she's just going to use this to uh circumvent like give yourself a shortcut then i'm all i'm all for it and it looks like she doesn't even need to use any sort of uh she could just jump on her own without like the rock's feather or anything which is kind of cool and like if you could just you know shortcut over things in a uh, creative ways, that's that's pretty cool. I'm not sure how they're gonna. Maybe they'll just restrict movement based on echoes, like they would you know certain items. But this is kind of interesting. Like you just I'm just gonna jump over the maps, the map uh, barriers. Is I love again the art style is adorable. Here we're actually just winding up, uh, winding up a little Octorok. And then unleashing, uh, unleashing destruction on it. You can fly over stuff with like a glider. It's almost uh, kind of like the glider in uh, Tears of the Kingdom. I don't know what this is, but it looks like uh, NPCs might probably play a big role. What's this? Which was kind of similar in Link's Awakening, but you're in Hyrule now. This is kind of cool. This is like some sort of. Granny beating up people. Oh, they got like some like Mifa looking uh, Zoras in this game, which is pretty interesting. Along with you know your traditional Zoras, so I guess it's like men and women. And then I got the Dekus, which I don't think have been, and maybe they have been. Of course, got the Great Deku Tree, which, I, which was like an N sixty four Zelda type of thing, but. Now it's here. Very interesting. You got the... I, I love I love the stuff. You can see the big fish in the background there. I love... The, this is like... That's like one of the things I just really love about uh, 2D games. Is seeing like bosses in the background. It's just one of those little things that I always like. Where like you're slowly moving through a stage and there's so, suddenly something creeping in the background. It's It's done. It's done quite a bit. But whenever it's done it. It always, it always tickles my fancy, <laughs> or so to say. Now you got some boss. I I'm not sure how the boss fights will work. 
on like whether you'll stop time to uh, choose your echoes. That could be one of the things that kind of uh, I don't know. That that's one of the only things about the this game that worries me is whether it's going to be really slow paced as you stop summon an echo it fights you stop summon another echo stop summon another echo could that, could that get boring maybe but i don't but i don't know but this is again really cool game really cool looking game probably gonna buy it uh we'll see when it comes out it comes out when september september 26 no wait we went too far okay Let's see. All right. September 26, 2024. So this year, a big uh, big game coming out for the Q4. Uh, yeah. I'm pretty sure I'm going to buy this because this looks really cool. I uh, always liked uh, top-down Zelda. And on the, N6, the uh, Super Nintendo Links of the past, uh, Zelda was a uh, one of the big things. Uh, probably my favorite Zelda of all time. 11 out of 10 will buy jack's on board he's gonna definitely gonna buy it but very very cool idea we'll see how it works out overall uh really cool concept i'm slightly worried about how the pace the pace of the game will be but uh, i think the uh the novelty of it is definitely will definitely uh outweigh any of the potential negatives 